Thank you. All right. So thank you again for joining me today. Uh, it's Earth Day, and I do believe that every day should be Earth Day, this connection and appreciation that we cultivate on this one day, April 22nd. Um, it'd be amazing if the whole world could start extending that connection to the every day. Every day is Earth Day is what a lot of the yogis say. Um, this is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day as well. So pretty cool that uh, we get to experience this together virtually. Um, so as I mentioned, if you can do this practice in nature, amazing. If you're inside, try to find a piece of nature that you can look at and be inspired by. So if you're not already, come up to a nice tall seat, whatever's comfortable. Again, like I said, you could choose to lay down for this meditation today, but I am going to give you some um, visual stimuli with nature. So if you can see some nature, that would be amazing. So finding that place where you can see the sky, maybe see a tree or plants and sit onto the earth. And if like me, you're sitting inside, imagine that your sit bones are rooting down deeper beneath the carpet, beneath your floor, deeper than your foundation of your house. Take one hand and touch down to earth. The other hand can just rest on your lap, or if you want to take both hands down, you can. Even reaching slightly behind you can help you sit up taller. And as you touch the earth, let your breath slow. Relax your shoulders, and relax your jaw. And feel that connection you're creating to the earth through your seat, through your hand or hands. And for those of you who are inside I want you to visualize the tips of your fingers extending downward like roots of a tree. And just like your sit bones were rooting deeper through the carpet, through the subfloor, through the foundation of your house. Imagine the tips of your fingers growing like roots. And keep this connection and set your eyes on a piece of nature. Grass, a plant, a tree, maybe the sky, and the clouds. And take in all that you're seeing. If it's a tree, what does the bark look like? What's the shape of the needles or can you see some buds forming? If it's the plant, can you notice all the magnificent shades of green? If it's the grass, do the same. How is each blade a little bit different? What's that certain color of blue in the sky? 
How many shades can you take in? Whether you can hear it or not, watch the wind whisper the branches of the trees. Can you see the shadows created by the energy of the sun dance across the different surfaces? And I want you to either quietly to yourself or in your mind, repeat the following question to nature. What do I need to know? What do I need to know? What do I need to know? And get quiet and listen. Be more receptive to the teachings of nature. You're welcome to even place your hands on your lap, palms up, to really welcome in the wisdom of nature. Keep listening. I'm going to play for you the Lakota prayer by Russell Means. In my last class, my last upload, I was only able to play a portion of it. So I'm going to give you the whole thing today. Oh, the young man. I should a Uh, 
ארצ'ון קאשר וואטון קאנקה. אמבטיק כאילו בילאמיה. קאנטי אדוק או ווקלה. הלו, אהולי גריב מיסטרי. תודה רבה לכם היום. Thank you for the four winds and the four directions and the four points of the universe, the four ages of the earth and the four ages of the human being. I thank you for everything that is sacred and holy and good. I thank you for the universe, which is our tabernacle, our house of worship. I thank you for the stars. which give us direction and tells us the changing of the seasons. I thank you for the moon, which watches over our women and purifies them naturally. I thank you for the sun, which is the giver of life, of energy to our grandmother, the earth, so that she can bring forth all of her children, our relatives. All of life, our relatives. I thank you for our sacred grandmother of the earth. And I thank the grandmother of the earth for the black hills, the Pachasapa, our sacred holy land. Thank you for the water. for all that the heavens give to us. And I thank you for that power that comes from the moon, from the sun, and from our grandmother the earth. I thank you for the four winds. I thank you especially for the east wind, which brings us the morning star and the dawn of a new day so that we may continue today without repeating the mistakes of yesterday. I thank you for the south wind, which brings us the cleansing and refreshing and warm winds from the south that bring warmth and generosity to our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirit. It brings warmth and generosity to our grandmother of the earth and all of her children who are our relatives. I thank you for the West Wind, which brings us the lightning and thunder spirits, which gives us the cleansing and refreshing rain, which cleanses and refreshes our sacred grandmother of the earth And all of her children are relatives. And I thank you for the cleansing and refreshing that it brings to our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirit. I thank you for the north wind, which brings us the white blanket that covers our grandmother of the earth in the time of cold. Thank you for those strong and enduring winds from the north, which gives strength and endurance to our sacred grandmother of the earth and all of her children who are our relatives and bring strength and endurance to our hearts, our minds, our body, and our spirit. And that east wind, which also brings us a newness, a brand new newness to our sacred grandmother of the earth and all of her children who are our relatives and brings a newness into our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. And again, that warmth and generosity for our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. Thank you 
for all our relatives, especially the winged, for all the beings that fly. For I thank you for all their sacrifices and suffering and for their wisdom and their teachings. I thank you, especially for the ego, which flies the highest, sees the furthest, and is faithful to its mate. Thank you for the hummingbird and the bee and everything that has wings, for all that they give. I thank you for the four-legged. I thank you for the medicines, the shelter, the clothing, the tools, and all that is holy that the four-legged give to us. I thank you for their food, for their wisdom and teachings, and for their sacrifices and suffering. I especially want to thank you for the wolf and the buffalo, for they teach us much about family life and the protections that those families deserve and the relationships between all our mothers and our aunties, our auntie mothers and mother aunties. I want to thank you for all our relatives who crawl and swim and live within the earth. I thank you for their teachings and their wisdoms, their sacrifices and suffering, and all that they give to us, their wisdoms and teachings, their sacrifices and sufferings. And I want to thank you Thank you for all the green things of the earth, everything that grows within and without the earth. And thank you for the trees, especially the sacred tree of life, which represents part of our Lakota nation. We must nourish the tree of life so that it can continue to mend our nation's hoop. Tree of life is the tree with the whispering leaves. I want to thank you for all the medicines. Thank you for the flowers and their sweet smells and their beauty. Thank you for their food, for them, everything that they give to us. We are our great teachers. Thank you. Okay, again, for all of life, that they are our relatives. And we must respect what they have, what they have to offer with all of their strengths and weaknesses. I want to thank you for the Ekdomi, the trickster teaches us about the failures of life, the foibles of life, so that we can better understand our relationship within that life. And it teaches us how to get along together like a family, a clan, a village, a nation, the world, the universe and on into infinity. I want to thank you for those teachings that teach us that our hearts and our minds affect infinity and all that try inspires before you get to infinity, all of what that means. It is a heavy responsibility honor those that are sacred, those that produce life, the females of life. For they are stronger than us, can stand more pain than us, live longer than us, and they are purified naturally than the world. Understanding 
his meanings. And I was just giving him a free life, free of disease, free of war. I thank you for our languages, for our languages, our, our being, our, our essence. Thank you for the ancestors, for their strength, their continued communication, and all that they have done before us to prepare this world for our unborn generations. I want to thank you for those unborn generations before that is a great responsibility. Thank you for the teachings must leave this life as we came into it so that the unborn can reap the benefits as we have. Oh, holy great mystery. Okay. Thank you for today. We talk Once again, we ask, what do we need to know now? My teacher Ian says, we cannot protect something unless we are in awe of that something. So I'd encourage you to get out into nature today. Be in awe of her, be inspired by the grass, the wind, the rocks, the waters, the trees, the creatures, the sky, the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth. We have so much to thank her for. Join the palm center of your chest, gesture of gratitude for earth's offering Loka Samosta Sukino Bhavantu, which means may all beings everywhere be happy and free. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful day. Namaste. Thanks for joining everybody. Enjoy your day.